dismissed downstairs. And I was asking him one more announcement, and that is, uh, what is it, Amanda? Okay, this, this Saturday, the youth are going to be doing another can and bottle drive. There's a sign-up sheet in the visitor's place back there. And someone said, well, why are they getting all these cans and bottles? Well, they're going to a little what they call the choir of the fire. And uh, I tell you what, that's that's some of the people I've been so impressed with is our young people. And they're doing a great, great job. And Zach and Amanda, our youth pastors, are doing a from me. But God was good enough to bring a little Kenya to us. Right. Yeah. Don't get nervous. I know what time it is. It's a quarter to 12. Let me just share with you. He only took about 35 to 40 minutes this morning. And he did awesome. Yes, he did. Yeah. Awesome. Great job. So why don't we do this? You didn't know this. Nobody comes here without us making sure they know how much that we appreciate them being here at New Beginnings. Come on, folks, let's let them know. We're glad to be here. Is Anneli there? 
No net. <laughs> oh, the nets, I hope you people don't love that. <laughs> and my son is called Hegai. Now, Hegai, I should tell somebody. <laughs> no Hegai, too. Pastor Tom. No Hegai. No Hegai. Anyway. <laughs> That is my family. Uh, my daughter just uh, been doing her third year in the university. She's doing environmental sciences. And uh, she's doing well. My son just finished at uh, 12th grade and is now waiting to join the university. Those who are here earlier, I told them what what it means, education, how serious education in our country is, because without education, without good education, you have no life, no future. Because job situation in our country is based on how much education you have. So for that reason, they really, they really, you know, emphasize education and just a very quality education. So my son, after when he sat on his 12th grade education uh, examination, they were competing. He was competing with 480,000 students. Wow. So with that 480,000 students, they will only pick the best one to go to university. The rest, they will be left there. So you may find your own way of going to university and that will be a private university. So my son out of there, and they put a cut off points, a cut off point has to be P play. And you know, remember we have P plane, and we have P minuses, we have C minus, C plus, C minuses, then we have C, we have D, we have D plus, and we have all that. So all the people that sat on that exam, only 125,000 qualified to go for university. Direct. So my son happened to be one among them. <laughs> and that was only with those people with B play, nothing less than B play. So that is a big blessing that I received from God, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, having said that. I want to appreciate Reverend Rani and his wife for having me stand before you today. And as I stand before you to speak to you, the one of you. Reverend Rani, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share the word of God with the congregation. Thank you so much. I also want to appreciate a lot and a lot my best friend, Brother Tom and Sister Lady. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you too. Thank you for making it possible that for me to come to meet this man of God and all this congregation. Our family loves you. Our church loves you very much. And let me tell you all, I say that I am my family, I say that I, our church is called Pentecostal Christian 
fellowship. Pentecostal Christian fellowship, in short, we say is 58 abbreviation. This year, and that is before it, before the last. Uh, Pastor Tom has come to us a number of times, and all the times he comes to us, people in our country or people in our congregation know him as Reverend Tom. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> because he brings the word of God in its in, in, uh, in text. <clears throat> and people, our people, fans receive the word in a form that not always received from any other minister who has come to visit with us. We always appreciate him when he comes. And when we come, when I came here, we have just put up, we always have a, a conferences in the month of August. And so when I came, my people prayed and said, Bishop, pray that Tom will come in this August. And pray that somebody else will also come with Tom this time around. Will not just be Tom and Elaine. Somebody else will come together with them. When I came and I shared this to Tom and I said, hey Tom, people want you back to come and speak to them. And Tom told me, Bishop Cruz, my heart is very, very much really. But finances are not available. And so we pray to God and say, God, make, provide, make provision on this. And I can tell you, the morning that we sat and prayed about Tom and Elaine coming, that same morning we walked outside. And as we walked outside the hall, visit Tom's friend. And Tom told him, people in Kenya still want me to go. But I don't have finances to go. And this gentleman told Tom, Do you want to go? And Tom said, Yeah, I don't have the finance. And this gentleman said, Do you want to go? And Tom said, Yes. And this gentleman went ahead right there and he wrote a check of $2,500. Wow. Right, right there. Wow. So that opens the door for Tom to come. And now we are all left with Elaine, and we are praying that also she will get her ticket to come. Amen. 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 Praying that God will also touch somebody. To come with Tom and come with Elaine. Pastor Lamano, you are here. You're welcome. Pastor, Pastor you're welcome. Yeah. Pastor, you're very much welcome. I would love to hear a pastor saying, Yes, I'm coming. But he is just, he's, he's, he's really having his fun. Well, I'm not to it. Pastor, God bless you so much. And please, when time comes for you to come, know that we will welcome you with all of our hearts. Thank you very much. Yeah. And so, having said that, I think it would be high time now to speak to you from the world. Amen. And I pray in the name of Jesus that all eyes be open. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please open his eyes too. Help him open his eyes. Amen. Yeah, yeah you know the enemy is not good. The enemy you come to church and the enemy takes brings a brings mattress from the house to church. So watch out so that you don't get 
Tomato is here. Amen. You go and get tomatoes at home. Okay? Amen. Yeah. This morning we shared a word from the book of Luke. And I was blessed, I'm sure that those who are here in the morning, they were blessed too. And I feel strongly in my heart that God will still want us to, to share together from the book of Luke where we share this morning. How many of you are there? Amen. Say, I'm there. I'm there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. You are there in the Bible? Luke chapter 5. Reason. And let me tell you, 
If you read Corinthians church, when Paul was writing to the church of Corinth, he was he addressed how many sins? How many sins did he address? Or how many issues he addressed? He addressed 12 issues in that church that needed to be straightened out. 12 issues. Issues to do with disunity, issues to do with fornication, issues to do with worship of idols, issues to, to do with uh, uh, mar, mar, you know, marriage, issues to do with marriage, issues to do with the brother, brother taking each other to court. You know that, all that, isn't it? He addressed all the number of 12 issues in the book of Corinth. But, do you know, that same church had so many, many good things. How do you know that? That same church, we had evangelists. That same church, we had teachers. That same church, we had uh, prophets. That same church, we had, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit moved in that church. Do you know that? Hello? Yes. That church was a church alive. A live church. But with all with those weaknesses, weaknesses in it. But you ask about the church, the Hebrew church. The Hebrew church, the pastor, the pastor was a weary pastor. You know what I'm saying? Weary? Weary, tired. Because every time the pastor was pleading, pleading, asking, begging, begging them to not go back, to not to not backslide. Throughout the back, the book. Throughout the book. He begins with chapter 1, he's telling them, please, please, do not let this greatest salvation <coughs> This that was spoken of by the prophets. You know what he's saying? He's pleading. He comes to chapter 5, 6. He's pleading. He tells them, hey, don't you try to backslide. It is a hard thing to do. <clears throat> then he comes, he takes them through the Levitical, Levitical laws, the rituals of worship in the Levitical in the old time. He brings them back and he says, look at this, this thing did not save man. We have a new Levitical law. That is the law that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. He comes up and he tells them, and he brings them to the chapter 11 in terms of about how Noah, how Abraham, how Enoch, how so and so, how they live the life that is of faith to God. Right. All about, all about trying to persuade, persuade, persuade. Are you getting the point? Yes. Chapter 12, he tells them, any child who is legitimate child, any child that is legitimate, the parent disciplines that child. And when the child is disciplined, he doesn't run away from home because he is being disciplined. Only a pastor's child, when he is being disciplined, he does what? He runs away. So you are legitimate children. When the father is disciplining you, you don't have to run away. Stay in. You are children. You are sons. You are daughters. Amen. So, this is the reason why I'm saying to me, if you, I was to 
choose between the church to pastor, I will choose to pastor the Corinth church. Because, you know, so much time. Paul is saying, you know, I expected you for all the times, for the years I have pastored you. I expected by now, you can tell me, oh, man of God, we also want to go and do ministry. Is, is it, this is what I expected of you. But any time I come to you, you still want to be baby, 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 you want baby, 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 seal, to baby, seal. you still want to be to give you treats, give you the, those biscuits, those are all you want from me. Right. Very well. And until when? Will I be giving you biscuits and sweets? Don't you care that the gospel has to be preached? Don't you care that Jesus has to be preached? Amen? Amen. That is the difference between the two. So if you give me one, I'll take one. I'll take the other. All right, let's go to Luke. I think I'll preach a little bit to you too. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Let's go to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I titled this chapter 5 of Luke. I gave it the title that uh, called, we call it, we call this or my theme, or the theme or something like that, I call it Be Compatible. Look at someone who just by you and said to him, Be Compatible. Uh, Tell that person, don't look at his eyes. Be Compatible. Be Compatible. So, be Compatible. You haven't told that friend, that gentleman, Be Compatible. He hasn't said, he hasn't heard it, really. He hasn't said to you. But I'm saying that the title for the day is Be Compatible. Nor you can also use it, use this word of phrase. Be switchable. 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 You go to that right now. You see here, I'm seeing the light. But let somebody just go there and push that button there and things will be off. They will be dark here. That is what I'm saying. Be switchable. Be compatible. And the reason why I'm saying to be compatible, we find it in the book of Luke chapter 5, verses 3. If you have your Bible, there you are. Please don't mind, don't mind me so much because I do a lot of swearing. <laughs> my um, my sister Lynn says you are. She says to me, I'm a lady who is in menopause. <laughs> Trouble, so much trouble, but um, I, 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 but I, 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 I take it by, I take it in love. <laughs> the other day in the morning, the other day in the morning, I was coming from the bathroom and I did, I had a towel and I didn't have a staff up here. And she was there, and she saw me and she said, Bishop, Bishop, I'm not looking. <laughs> and she has seen me, she has seen me, but she's telling me. I'm not looking. <laughs> we have fun. I have fun with her. <laughs> I'm Mr. I'm Mr. Lee. Mr. Lee. I miss her Lee. I miss her Lee so much. But yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's wonderful family anyway. Yeah. That on record. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that is, that is, that is, 
Where are you from? And why are you asking me to put my boat into the, the waters again? And Peter did not say, hey, gentlemen, if I have to do that, you have to pay me because the whole night I have been here without any catch. So you have to get to agree on some wages. Peter did not go into stories. But if Peter was just but there to be compatible. He was just there to follow what he's been asked to do. And that's what he went ahead and did. But he had all those, he had, he had, you know, he would have refused this gentleman and told him, hey, listen, Peter is tired. I'm worn out. The night has been long, and I cannot wait anymore to be on here. I want to go home. Furthermore, what may brought me here is fish. And I have I've got no fish. So as you see me, I'm not, I'm not a happy person. I'm disappointed. And my heart is breaking now. Because how can I be on the sea for all night? Got nothing. And I'm going back home, going back to my people, my those that I supply fish to with nothing. And now here you come, you are telling me you want to sit on my boat. I don't know how long you will sit on this boat. I don't know for how many other hours that I'll have to wait here in the sea. I don't know. So probably we need to agree on time, maybe. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I, I asked Pastor, Pastor, what time do you want me to be here? And Pastor told me, Bishop Chris, you go preach, preach, preach. So he did threatened me, you know? So it is about the Holy Spirit because I also know that the Spirit of the Lord is the Spirit of what? Freedom. Order. So I also have to know that when I do what I'm doing, when I'm preaching, there come a time when the flesh says, hey, enough, I have got it enough, enough. And then the acid, there's an acid here, which wants to eat the stomach. <laughs> Begins to rise up to eat that stomach because that acid needs something badly. <laughs> so I also have to be, to be aware that that acid can eat the stomach and you have to cost to spend money doing what? Fixing those parts of the body, the stomach that has been eaten. So please, I know it, and I'll, please bear with me, I will, I will not take you long. <laughs> Come on. Don't, don't, please, I know people might think that I'm a Kenyan because Kenyan preach and preach and preach. But I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, a, I'm kind of like, a, you know, disciplined Kenyan preacher. <laughs> Amen. A little bit disciplined, not so much disciplined. Like you do here. <laughs> so in verse 3, we see Peter being so, so compatible with the stranger. And he's doing this thing without in his mind thinking of what the stranger or what the reward will be. <coughs> Amen? What the reward will be. He's doing it without expecting a word. He's doing it to serve a stranger. And so he gives the stranger a pulpit. Thank you, Pastor, for giving me the pulpit. God bless you. The fact that the Pastor Reverend Tom and Elaine knows me, not, it's not just a a direct acceptance here. 
by the pastor to come to India. But I'm so happy that he did. God bless you so much. So, Peter doing, is doing it without any expectation of a reward. He did it freely from the heart right. because he is very compatible. Amen. He is switchable. He is flexible. He is stretchable. He could, you could stretch him. There are people who cannot stretch. They are short, just short, and that's it. <laughs> you can't stretch them. They, what they know is what they know. I mean, I, what they know is what they know. They don't want to learn anything. Better, nothing to add to what they know. They know it all. <laughs> we have no standing hold. They know it all. So, Peter is not the know it all. Peter is saying, hey, you want to make use of this boat? Yeah, I will, I will offer it to you. And I will hang around until when you finish the preaching. Look, Peter is being so compatible to Jesus, not knowing what will come after. Right. Amen? Amen? Many of us, many of us, many church people come to church with all their own filled expectations. Right. Amen. Then I'm going to church and I want to, you know, the preacher from Kenya. I want the preacher from Kenya to speak into my life, you know, to pray for me to get me up. Yes, I'll pray for you. But the miracle worker is not me. The miracle keeper is not me. He keeps us too. When he sees, you decide. But I cannot, I cannot meander him. And tell him, hey, Lord, do it. <laughs> when he knows your heart so well, when he knows that you are stubborn, <laughs> amen. amen. When he knows you are difficult, when he knows you are rigid, he will not let the miracle come. But when he sees you are flexible, when he sees you are compatible, even without praying for me, even without praying for me, he will release your miracle. He will release your blessings. Because he sees you are flexible, because he sees your heart goes after him. He sees your heart yearns for him. He sees your heart loves him. He will bless you. He will release a miracle. He will open that door that is to have been hard to be opened for years. He will open it. Amen. But every time we cannot manipulate him to do that miracle for you. Many preachers try to manipulate God. They try to manipulate God by Saying things that they know so well, they are not things that God has said they should say. That's right. Very good. But because they are so much of money minded, pocket, they are manipulating God for you so that they can get into your pocket. Very good. That's right. Your pocket is what is causing them to manipulate, to say things that are not there. For you to be happy, for you to feel, hey, the preacher is saying, the preacher is saying, the preacher is saying, let me tell you, the preacher is not God. The preacher is not God. God wants you to receive miracles. God wants you to receive blessings. But let me tell you, God searches the heart. What is after that miracle? What happens after that miracle? You start kicking people with that miracle. You start blowing trumpet with that miracle. 
needs this. I know my church needs to be the rain to be paid, the workers to be paid. Hey, listen, this miracle God has done to me. Now I am healed. I'm going to church. I'll spend my time in church. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other day, Dennis and uh, Dennis and, uh, Christine. and Christine were looking for a house badly because the landlord had given them a notice to move. And they were given up to eight of every supposed to move from that house where they are living. And the landlord had given a bad report about them. So everywhere they would go look for a house, no door blows. Everywhere they go look for a house, door blows. But yesterday, God opened the doors for them to get a new place to go live. Yes, Amen. a ticket on their last trip to Kenya. Yeah. This couple. Yeah. They love God. And God will not put them to shame. God will not put them to shame because they love Him. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And to add miracle to miracle, she needs some treatment to be done on her. Some lots of surgery to be done. Corrections and somebody offered somewhere, I don't know what, who did it, but she is now going to do the corrections in a very short while from now. Amen. The heart corrects man to God. The heart makes God moved from his seat and he walks right to you and he begins to do wonders. He begins to do wonders. They are expected. The impossible things. The heart brings God into your life. And God opens the door that I've been shut. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We will pray together. But as we come to pray together, please look into your heart. Is that miracle? Is the blessing you're looking for just to be there as a show? Is it that blessing to be there as a show for you nope. to break around and tell, look at who am I? Look at what I have. Look at the home I have. Look at the car I drive. God is not even interested in the cars you have. God is interested in you, in you, and in me. But Jesus, nevertheless, but 
than the net. Listen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is saying into your life. It doesn't matter how long you have looked for situations to change and improve in your life. Jesus is saying, listen. Listen. You have been good to me. You have been nice to me. You have been flexible to me. You have church to come to church. You have made sure that the church is swept, is clean. Hallelujah. Many of us we wait for Sunday only to come to sit in the church and expect what? God bless to bless us. You don't know that this place needs cleaning. You don't know this chairs need to be arranged. You don't know that the church needs your backup, your support. But on Sunday morning you show up. Amen. Throughout the week you've been all your own businesses, busy on your own things, not remembering that this place where you come for worship needs you. Yeah. Yeah, right. Then only on Sunday morning you show up and you tell Pastor, Pastor, I need your grace, I need your miracle, I need your truth, I need your grace, I need your miracle, I need your grace. Listen, listen. God is not a man to be mocked. Yeah. Very God is not a man to be mocked. Yeah. He has given you good health. He has given you car to drive. He has given you food to eat. Right. Just to show up in the church or ask the pastor one morning, one weekend, Pastor, what can I do for the church today? Very good. Amen. 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 Uh, the, church, the, the work situation for me is not very bad. My duty, I have some free time over the week. But I can I show up in the church to do some work? But you've been running. You've been so much on your cent your centered situations. Then you show us up, Pastor. So please don't misuse us sometimes. Church members, church people, don't misuse ministers of the gospel sometimes. And when the miracle doesn't happen, you blame Pastor. The miracle did not happen when the Pastor prayed. I have not received the miracle. Now I have to run from here, go to attend that crusade, that prayer meeting. That, that whatever, you know, you run in church, you run in church to church, you run in pastor to pastor, you run in places to places, looking for Jesus, yet he knows. You are not ready to for him. You are not giving him time also for him to use you. You are not comfortable, you are not reachable, you are not stretchable. <laughs> you're not suitable. You are such a hot person. You are so, such a selfish, sacred person. Jesus knows who you are. Amen? Amen. Jesus knows who you are. Amen. You think of this. You've been running all over, all over, all over. And your parents at home are, too, are so busy, are so worn out. Then you show up in the evening. You tell them, I want food to eat. They will, or my mother used to kick me. My mother used to hit me hard. And she would tell me, go where you spend your day, go eat there. <laughs> <laughs> she said, yes, I'm giving you place to sleep. Yeah. Place to sleep I'm giving you. But what to eat, I'm not giving you. Go where you spend the day. Eat there and come sleep. <laughs> Don't you think church is like a family? Yes. yes. Don't you think church is a family? Yes. Don't you think we need to be to surround the pastor? Yeah. Yes. I'm not talking. I'm not talking as a as a Kenyan pastor. I'm talking to uh, to the body of Christ. Yes. Yes. To the body of Christ. We are a body. The body 
of Christ is universal. That's right. Amen. So I belong here. Amen. I belong here. Amen. And when you come to Kenya, you belong there.
very, very much. We'll be praying for you, and um, please keep him not only just in your mind, but keep him in his family and your prayers. Um, Eileen, I will never look at you the same again. Amen. <laughs> um, but again, what a pleasure it is. Be compatible, be switchable, be flexible. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 New beginnings, listen to me very closely. Don't please, please, Wednesday night, uh, we continue our series on loyalty versus disloyalty. I'm going to be teaching on Wednesday night. Creating a culture of allegiance. Creating a culture of allegiance. What that simply means is, do we have a church that feels free about backbiting each other? We're going to be talking about that Wednesday night. We're going to be talking about how does gossip begin? Well, it begins here. It moves to here. And the third place that it is, is in your homes. So you got to ask yourself the question, when people come into my home, do they hear positive things or negative things? We're going to be talking about that. Next Sunday, I'll be preaching a message called Broken People. You don't want to miss that. Just before you go home, when you leave these doors, when you move out of here, you're going to run into people. Some of you, hopefully physically, don't run into somebody. But when you leave here, people are going to watch you and look at you. They're going to begin to ask themselves a question. Is that a Christian? Is that a Christian? If it is, where do they go to church? Some are going to see maybe how some of us act and say, oh, I know they're not a Christian. Where do they go to church? Christ like. If you go out to eat today somewhere, listen to me carefully. If you go out to eat somewhere today, don't act like an idiot at the restaurant. Unless you want to tell them you're from other, another church. That'll be fine. But don't, not in the beginnings. Don't be ordering the waitress or waiter around like you're the boss. I talked to teenagers this morning that Jesus said, if you're going to become great, you must first be a servant. Why don't you encourage the waitress or the waiter instead of telling them how bad they're doing? Encourage them. Pick them up. Let them know they're doing a good job. When you go through the Walmart stores, as difficult as it may be sometimes, you go through that line. And everybody else is like, not in a hurry, and you are. Just stand there and start to sing. That might move a lot quicker. Just start to sing. <laughs> Act kind. Okay? Act kind. The other day I'm in a, in a line and one of our members are there. And she began to talk to me about situations that are going on. We're, we're in Walmart. Where was we at? Mine? Where are you at? Where's your mind? Where are you at? Where's, was that Walmart? Praying for the lady. Walmart. And I'm telling you, she's laying all this stuff out. And I said, well, we're going to pray for you. And we took off. And all of a sudden, on the way out the store, the Lord said, what did you just do? That's right. Very good. She wanted prayer. And you said you will pray for her. Am I not the God of now? <laughs> so I said, Jeremiah, I said, hey, turn around. Let's go back. <laughs> we walked back. By that time, she is in the line. All of her stuff is being checked out. She's right there. They, the, the checker is helping. And she's there. And I walked up and I called her my name. And I said, hey, I need to apologize. Do you want a prayer? And I left. Let's get it on right now. Just 
start praying right there in that store so everybody knows we believe in the power of prayer. Hey. It's the power of prayer that's helped me this last month. It's the power of prayer that's helping my dad get through. It's the power of prayer that's keeping us strong. It's not my life. And you have not forgotten to pray. So I tell you. Yeah. 